if I came in yelling at you, you probably would run the other way. That's what we're going to talk about today is anger and the opposite side and the explosive side. But, but let's just talk about this. When I come in to my house and I look like this, right? Can you all see that? When I come into my house and I look like that, then you know what everybody else does? I got one that gets sad. I have one that checks out, right? Just completely checks out on what's going on. Oh, I got another one that says, how can I help? What needs to happen? And then I got a dog that runs away. So all of this from basically one face. How quickly do you think they know that I'm angry when I come in? And why am I angry? Well, there's some reasons for it. But also when I come in showing this, I get all these reactions. I get all these reactions the minute I close the door. So let's talk a little bit more about anger and how it shows up. It's uncomfortable for most people in most cultures. It is uncomfortable. And we look at it and think, why is it here? Why do we need it? I mean, look at my eyes already. They're just like popping out of my sockets. I am an eruptor. When I get angry, I erupt. And most of my family are suppressors. Even the poor dog, he's a suppressor too. So they tend to freeze or flee. Now, Here's some interesting things. Anger is with us from the moment we show up in this world. It is part of our category of emotions. It's God-given. We need anger. Why do we need anger? Because it's a signal, a flashing light that says something is wrong. So there is an acronym, HALT. Hungry, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. If you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, that's a primary issue in your life that anything that's secondary, like for me, all the dishes being left in the sink or the house being a wreck after I've come home after a long day or things just not getting done, I'm already hungry and I'm lonely and I'm tired. So. Those are the things we need to check for when we are giving responses to what's going on in our life. The reason we also get angry is because something is unfair or somebody has blocked our goals or we feel powerless. But let's talk about anger in a way that really makes sense. And I'm going to post all the videos down below where I gleaned a lot of this is anger is like a six-year-old child. It would be irresponsible to give them the keys to the car, but it would be equally as irresponsible to stuff them in the truck. So eruptor or suppressor, we've got things to work on. So when these flashing red lights show up, here's what we've got choices from our biological responses. We fight, we run, or we freeze. And when we freeze, we look like this. So that's what we look like when we freeze. We don't know what to do, where to go. Now, how did we get here that we're not responding to our anger in a way that works for us, but instead works against us? A lot of this, according to Gabor Mate, who is a researcher both a medical doctor and a psychologist in the area of trauma has to do with when we could not express healthy anger. So his take on it is healthy anger is very now. It's present moment. It happens right this minute. It is something that goes up and we take care of it and it's over. Now I'm raising boys and I see that more often in boys than I do in girls, but they will explode and then go on with their lives or they'll hash it out and go on with their lives. But it could be a trauma response because when you are a child, something happens to you 
and it violates your boundaries, either your personhood or you're told only good girl, good girls never get angry, just to lock it up, go someplace else. You're just effectively stuffing that child in the trunk. And unfortunately, that's part of what's been going on in our society is we're stuffing that anger, stuffing that anger until it does really explode. Well, in trauma, it gets locked in the body. So when those triggers happen, we over explode. Is there any reason for me to come in and yell at people with this face when my dishes are done? No. Consequences, follow through, asking, being polite, but blowing up? No. That is a deeper response of, I'm not loved, I'm not cared about, I don't feel good about me, maybe I'm hungry and tired. All of those things set that in motion because of earlier responses when I wasn't able to release the anger in a healthy way, when I had to suppress it. And so here's the next thing that you don't think about with anger is anger is essential, essential for setting boundaries. Now, in the addiction world and loved ones of addicts, we tell you all the time, set boundaries, make sure that you're setting clear boundaries, make sure that everybody understands their boundaries. Boundaries are only things that you can control. All kinds of words around boundaries. How do you know when to set boundaries? How do you know when boundaries are appropriate? How do you know when you need to set boundaries? Anger is one of those awarenesses of when you need to set boundaries. If we don't attend to our anger, we're going to do one of two things. We're going to suppress it and check out, or we're going to erupt. And the eruption is not the healthy part of anger. The eruption spills into rage and it expands, according to Gabor Mate. It doesn't calm it down because the body is not releasing it at that time. It is still trapped. And so it just expands, expands, expands. So this, you know, take a pillow, hit a pillow. Here's my angry face. Take a pillow, hit a pillow. That's not going to work for suppressed trauma anger. That has to be dealt with in a therapeutic coaching situation, not in just, oh, I erupted and now it's gone. That's not healthy anger if it just keeps expanding. And that drives your suppressor to look and be very careful of you and try not to set off your anger. In fact, it's that eggshell feeling. So not only are suppressors causing themselves physical damage and emotional damage because they don't know when to set boundaries because they're stuffing that child in the trunk, the eruptor is giving the keys to the six-year-old and letting the six-year-old drive, which is not creating a healthy environment for the relationship and is damaging them often with guilt and shame. So when we work with words like always, never, and not showing up, that says there's some frozen or stuck anger that we need to work with. And how does that show up? That shows up in self-labeling. I'm just an angry person. I don't know what to do about that. That shows up in physical pain, sometimes across the back of the neck, and it's locked into different body parts. It can show up as illnesses. Anger is part of our emotions. It has to have an opportunity to tell us what's going on. So here's the exciting part. Here's the exciting part of anger. Anger is a signal that something's wrong. Anger is also something that heals trauma by releasing it. So when you are able to work with a person who can help you heal that trauma by releasing it, through anger, through sadness, through dealing with what happened in the past, then it clears it out. It's very cleansing. It's like getting a scrubby sponge down in there and clearing out all those things. Anger also pops us out of denial. When anger shows up, we know something's wrong. We know we need to do something. The question is, what do we need to do? And if we stay stuffing it in the trunk, then we stay in denial. The other thing about anger is, it hangs around until we take action. 
So we can repress it, we can erupt over it, we can go into rages. It's going to hang around until we release that bodily trapping of the anger. So if we're using words like always, never, if we're in physical pain, if we're acting in ways that we never thought we would act in, it's time for an anger check. And how do you do that? Well, Dr. Monte talks about Tara Branch, and she is a spiritual healer, teacher, meditation person, and she has an acronym called RAIN recognize that it's happening. And that's about getting curious, not about getting frustrated with ourselves, but about getting curious. I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling like there's an injustice going on here. I'm feeling like something is wrong. So recognize that the emotion is happening. And as I said in the beginning, anger is one of those emotions that we just want to throw it away. We just want to say, hey, this is not something that's good for us. Just checking to see that I didn't actually throw it away. This is not something that's good for us. This is something that harms our relationships, and we just want to throw it away. But by throwing it away, we are losing all the value of it. And then we allow it, not in a way that we harm somebody, not in a way that we erupt over, all over somebody, in a way that brings it forward. Because again, here's the interesting thing. It doesn't last very long. It's very present. It's very big. Sometimes it can feel overwhelming, but then it dissipates. And then you're able to investigate, investigate and think, huh, my family says every time I come in the house, I look like this. Why is that? What's triggering for me? How can I shift that? How can they help me shift that? What can we do differently? What can I do differently? So that investigation may take some journal writing, may take working with a coach. It may take some deeper trauma therapy. And then the next thing is to nurture yourself. I was just talking with a friend and she had, she was desperately trying to help another person, had taken them to see a lawyer to help them. And the lawyer had pointed out that even though they thought most of the problem was solved and they were ready to go, there were still some really big hurdles, which made her angry. She thought she had everything in place. And she let this flare go up. She recognized it. She allowed it. She investigated it. And then she did really great self-care. She took a nap. She ate well. She talked it out with her husband. And they began to work through it. So this nurture piece is crucial because you can't just do fight, flight, or freeze and expect not to have anger stuck somewhere in your body. So reign, recognize, allow, investigate, and nurture. I'm Tanya. I coach people who are stuck often in relationships, not understanding their own anger, not understanding addicted loved one's anger, or being angry with the addicted loved one and not and having a struggle with that or have stuffed their anger for years. So if you want to step in and begin to solve this, anger is a vital emotion. It's something that can be our ally that can teach us all kinds of things and show us when there is injustice and when we need to shift. And once it's released, it can be something that really connects you to your gut, to your God, and to who you are. So be sure and hit the like button below. Be sure and hit subscribe if you're on YouTube. If you're watching it on Facebook, let me know what you think. And I'd love to hear your comments and make sure there is a booking link up above. If you want to investigate this, we can hop on a call and talk through that. Again, I'm Tanya Joya at tanyajoya.com. And I look forward to talking with you soon. And if you're on the podcast, you missed a couple of visuals. So you may want to go back and watch the YouTube version of this. Keep trusting God, cleaning house and telling the truth. And I'll speak with you soon.